You know what? I'll say it. Video game tutorials get way too much crap. Maybe we're all just institutionalized to the point where we've experienced them so often that playing through them leaves us frothing at the mouth like rabid chihuahua. But let old gremlin lay some knowledge on you. Every game could be someone's first. There is no too advanced in gaming, the same way you don't force people to read The Very Hungry Caterpillar before they can read The Lord of the Rings. You do it because that book f***ing slaps. But I'm getting off topic. Tutorials are a gateway into a game and there are so many ways it can be done, so today I thought we'd explore the anatomy of the oft overlooked video game tutorial. To that end, I scoured four console generations and as many genres as I could stomach before my brain imploded to settle on a sample size of 40 titles. From those, we'll go over the different types of tutorials I found, their pros and cons, as well as trying to determine what the best tutorial is. Not just for a newcomer to the hobby, but veterans too. Let's dive in. But before all that, there is one thing I want to point out. There are way, way too many games that require you to move to get to the basic move tutorial. It's actually kind of crazy how often this happens, and I genuinely do not understand the thought process into it. Without further ado, on with the show. It's kind of weird to think about it, but there is legitimately a form of quote unquote tutorial where the game doesn't teach you anything. It just picks you up, drops you in the sand pit with all the toys you need and just leaves. You're probably thinking, wait, how is that a tutorial? And at a base level, you're, you're kind of right. But if you think about it, the game is essentially pushing you to learn by doing experimenting with buttons and commands at your own pace rather than pushing you down the learning conveyor belt, so to speak. And it's not really throwing you in the deep end either. The early stages of the games that use this are pretty calm so you don't end up feeling like it's an adapt or die scenario. Now this is actually pretty common in older titles from the 7th gen or before, mainly because these games came with instruction manuals that outlined basic controls and other potential weirdness, but I didn't expect many newer titles to do the same. Hollow Knight does it, Hat in Time does it, Doom 2016 literally just hands you a gun and says go, do a crime. But this is where the internal issue with this style of learning comes in. It expects you to have at least a baseline knowledge of general video game controls. Again, for long time enjoyers, this isn't an issue. We know all after all. But every game can be someone's first and expecting them to know the ancient lore of basic video game mechanics it's very presumptuous and while it isn't super massive of a bar to entry, it can drive some people away. If you've played video games for any length of time, you've definitely come across this one. You know him, you love him, it's the crappy little info box. Now I shouldn't be throwing shade, games have been relying on tutorials and actually just general game stuff with info boxes for years and honestly, they're very good at giving the player the baseline information that they'll need going forwards. Most commonly, it shows you the controls in one succinct package and other more specific gameplay mechanics either as they appear or as loading screen hints, but there's one pretty serious issue with conveying anything this way. Context. It's all well and good giving someone technically all the details they'll need to know, but in a bubble it's basically meaningless. Say you tell the player X is the attack button. Purely mechanically, they're good to go. However, if you don't then explain that X can be pressed in specific patterns to perform combos, you can expect them to spend the entire game just blindly mashing X and getting mighty bored with it all. So ultimately, the info box as a tutorial isn't all that good, but it is much better used to augment other styles just to clarify a few things. Naturally, you'd want to know how the game works before it sends you off to fight monsters, shoot guns or whatever the hell else you'd be expected to do. And generally the game wants you to know that too. And sometimes they really, really want that. So much so that they teach you absolutely everything at the very beginning. The info dump is a very hard and fast version of tutorialization, throwing everything and the kitchen sink at you within the first 30 minutes to an hour of gameplay, depending on the title. Movement, combat, side systems, literally saving the game. All of it will be covered in a whistle-stop tour that will likely leave your head spinning, sometimes. The issue is that on occasion the game will give you everything you need to play the game, but not enough to actually play the game. Let's give you an example. Dark Souls 1's Undead Berg covers movement, combat, healing, bonfires and interacting with the world. 
and on a base level, it teaches you everything you need to know to explore and survive the game, technically. Because while it does this, it doesn't explain poise, equip load breakpoints, weapon upgrades, scaling, spell buff, immersing, hollowing, kindling, two-handing, strength modifiers, status ailment, stability, etc, etc. It leaves a lot unsaid that reasonably should have been. Case in point, I spent my entire first playthrough with a plus 5 raw halberd and fat rolling. So essentially, if the game doesn't info dump enough, you can spend the majority of the game missing a lot of important details. There is also the issue, and it's a problem with tutorials in general, but more so here, that if the player doesn't play the game for a couple of weeks or longer and forgets how to play, the game won't give them that info again. So they either have to start again or bumble around for however long pressing every button until the memory kicks in, which isn't super great, honestly. On the other end of the spectrum, sometimes the game plays very coy with you. You've just met, you haven't had a chance to get to know each other, and we haven't even got past the awkward small talk yet. So much so that it'll only tell you things when they come up in conversation, or to drop the metaphor entirely, as and when you come across them in-game. The need to know tutorial is just that, need to know. Come across combat, it'll teach you combat. Come across dialogue options, it'll teach you how to talk good. Come across a sniper rifle, it'll teach you whatever scope zoom mechanic of the 50 bloody options this shooter has decided to use this time. I would say that the need to know is arguably one of the best types for more complicated mechanics and aspects of the game, as typically it's a lot easier to grasp when it shows you the thing, then gives you the real world application for what you've just learned like enemy weaknesses, action commands, combo mechanics, you get the gist. The problem is that, depending on how complicated of a game it is, you can end up using need to know tutorials a lot. Especially if you have a crazy amount of weird and wonderful gameplay systems that need to be introduced sporadically throughout. You can go tens of hours and still be getting tutorials, some of which being for mechanics you've probably already stumbled across. Or worse, you're locked out of major mechanics until the game introduces them. Looking at you, Persona 5. An extension of all tutorials, but most commonly attached to the need to know, repeat after me is exactly what it says on the tin. The game shows you a thing, then gets you to repeat it back to them. Sometimes it's them giving you a tutorial, and the next room is where you can practice the move. Dark Souls, for example. But more often than not, it will make you repeat it for a set amount of times to ensure you understand how it works, so you won't struggle with it later which is honestly a good thing. To use Dark Souls again, I didn't know how to parry at all throughout my entire playthrough because the game never required me to learn it, which made Gwyn way harder than he had any right to be. But then again, you don't want the barrier of entry to be too strict. Otherwise, you end up with the tutorial from the original driver for the PS1, known to have probably the most insufferably hard TUTORIAL in gaming purely because it gives you a list of things to do, a short time to do them all in, and will fail you for hitting too many things. Made doubly annoying because the game is very particular about how the manoeuvres should be performed, and frankly the amount of people that got stuck on this for hours, or never even beat it, should speak volumes for the state of this bloody thing. Something you'll notice with some tutorials, most often the info dump, is that they are very commonly happening somewhere away from the rest of the game world. This is typically referred to as the Tutorial Island, but I prefer to call it the Tutorial Dimension. Mainly because a lot of them just have a pocket dimension, or a dream space, or AR, VR, or just a big empty void, where you either go through set tutorials, or just practice your moves, or combos, or whatever. And there really isn't an inherent advantage or disadvantage to the Tutorial Dimension, because frankly it's just a setting thing. However, how you implement it can either reinforce a player's immersion in the story and world, or completely shatter it. Personally though, I love a good tutorial island that keeps you in the setting. It's weird, but I'm not typically a fan of a game reminding me that it's a game. I get it, sometimes you're busy. You don't have the time to read through instructions or any video game Euler. Don't lie to me by the way. So having to sit through a tutorial just isn't going to cut it. That's why we have the skippable tutorial, a tutorial that is, well, skippable. That's it, what else do you want me to say? Normally there's an option you can switch on to skip them, typically with the games you've already played. DMC4 toggles off the tutorial with Dante automatically after the first go round, 
and you have to fish through the menus to turn it back on again. But the more immediate example is Dark Souls, again. As all the tutorials are interactables on the floor, you could just skirt around them like that, that really intense looking homeless man at the train station that you really don't want to be making eye contact with. This really isn't a type of tutorial on its own, but more an aspect of one that can make replaying old favourites easier without having the game explain the jump button 57 times. On the flip side you have the repeatable tutorial. Sometimes life happens, sometimes you can't get back to play a game for months on end and when you do, you remember literally none of the controls and you're at the final boss, which has never happened to me before ever. Honest. You want a refresher, but a lot of games don't let you without starting a fresh save, which frankly kinda sucks. Thankfully there are some out there that understand that not everyone treats games like a full time job and sets aside a table for you to rewire your brain. Enter the Gungeon does this quite well. At the start of the game you have to play through the tutorial in the hub area, but afterwards if you go back to that door you can repeat as and when you need it, which might be pretty often considering the nature of roguelikes. Much like skippable tutorials, it's only a component part and not a type of tutorial itself, but it's great for getting people back into it and making things more accessible. I guess you're wondering what type of tutorial is the best? Well, none of them. Hopefully you've noticed the through line in this video is that there are no bad tutorials, just bad implementation. No one really complains about need to know tutorials until they drag gameplay to a crawl and info dumps are grand as long as it dumps all the info. As long as it does its job and it's the least intrusive way possible, no one gives a crap. But that's a cop out answer, isn't it? So instead, let's go over another cop out that's a little bit more interesting. As all of the iterations I've mentioned have their good and bad aspects, the best way of doing this is to mix and match. Say a common example is having the starting info dump, but the game drip feeds need to know tutorials when new mechanics are introduced or your repeatable tutorial is in the tutorial dimension, or the box pop-ups can be completely turned off if need be. So many fun little combos can be done, but the best example of tutorialization I've come across is a borderline Frankenstein's mess of all of them. Hi-Fi Rush kinda goes crazy with it all. The first level is a tutorial mission where it info dumps you, but from there it gives you pop-ups as and when new mechanics are revealed. Certain tutorials are covered in an in-law tutorial dimension, it gets you to repeat most actions it shows you because they're required to understand to progress, and throughout the game you'll run into Smidge, a really helpful fridge that will run you through tutorials you've already done and give you more hints on top of what you've already learned. And also, on subsequent playthroughs, the game will ask you if you want to repeat certain tutorials so you can skip any that you've already done. The game just Gets it, man! What about you guys? Do you think tutorials are unfairly hated and do you have one that you think is genuinely good? This has been the Resident Gremlin and I'll see you next time.